Welcome to STS Presents. I'm Lucas Siska. Plantar fasciitis is one of the most frustrating injuries in running. Trust me, I've been there. In this video, I want to share with you When we have plantar fasciitis, rest alone can't fix the issue. You can go for three months without running at all, only to try and attempt to run again and feel like this. A few minutes later. many ways that you can get plantar fasciitis. If you're on your feet all day at work, having bad shoes, if you're a runner, this, this video is geared more towards kicking it as a runner, just overuse, then of course having bad shoes with running that don't fit your style of foot. There, there are several reasons why you can get it, but essentially plantar fasciitis is caused by small micro tears in, in, the, in the plantar, in the, in the bottom of your foot. And we get these kind of tears all the time and usually your foot can deal with them if one of these uh, reasons that I just mentioned um, is causing the tears to happen more frequently what will happen is that the foot will get so inflamed that you know the heel will get inflamed that you won't be able to uh, do the things that you love you know uh, you know either running or hiking or or just you know do your job at work it, it can be such a pain because you can have it for for ages you know when I had plantar fasciitis I had it for 18 months straight and I just couldn't get rid of it. That's why I'm excited to share with you how I got rid of it and I was able to keep it at bay and to never get it again. So the first strategy for getting rid of plantar fasciitis is that you have to loosen up uh, the foot. And this starts from the very beginning. People, you know, buy, they buy these special socks to keep their foot bent, bent backwards at night when they sleep because when you sleep, uh, you know, the, the foot kind of constricts and then when you stand up in the morning, that first step, uh, it just rips. So you just cause more tears. So you're trying to get rid of these tears, but because we're on our feet all the time, it's hard to manage those micro tears and it builds up on each other and you, and you just can't, you can't shake it. So that's the frustration. So um, people buy these socks at night and it's so uncomfortable to sleep with. I tried them myself. After a few nights, I just couldn't do it anymore. But what I found instead was I could get the same result, get a good night's sleep if I just was sensitive to the fact that in the morning, my first step, uh, I wasn't going to try to just smash on my feet and rip that foot up again after it constricted at night. So if you understand that this first strategy is all about getting the foot loose, before you even step out of bed in the morning, you need to massage the bottom of the foot, do some, do some toe scrunches, loosen up the ankle, slowly get into that first step so that when you do take that first step, uh, we're not ripping anything. All right. So something as simple as this could help you be on your way to kick plantar fasciitis because now we're, we've done one simple thing that's going to alleviate further rips to the plantar. But we need to be conscious of this all the time. So if we're, we're in, a, in a job that causes us to uh, sit at a desk, our foot will constrict again. You know, before you go off and take that step, you need to loosen it up. And then as a whole, to get rid of plantar fasciitis, you need to get that plantar so loose that it won't rip at all, okay? And, th and you can do that with simple stretches that I'm gonna show you here, you know, hanging your foot off of a step. Uh, when I had plantar fasciitis and I finally got rid of it, I, I, would, I would go throughout the day anytime I came across uh, some steps either at my house or at work, uh, I would just hang my heel off for a good uh, 30 to 45 seconds and then be about my merry way. It was just that mindset of constantly trying to keep that foot um, nice and loose. Uh, and then of course simple calf stretches can, can, can do this as well. Strategy number two is then building on strategy number one and that is massage of the planter, okay? Um, if you dig into it, you know, you can use things like a golf ball. I like to use this uh, thing that kind of look like, looks like a coat hanger. It's, it's made of metal and I can manipulate it where I can really dig in into my heel. I can dig into the, the bottom of my foot. These are two things. You're having the mindset of trying to keep it loose and then you're having the mindset of massaging. Why massage? You're trying to get blood to the area which will promote healing. 
Not to mention, if you've had serious plantar fasciitis like I've had, built up some scar tissue because some of those micro tears are, are healing themselves back up, which causes scar tissue, and that's, that's not allowing the blood to flow there properly. Okay, so if we can break that up, we can get that blood flowing back in there, and we can promote healing of that foot. And I just, guys, I want to make a quick disclaimer right now. I'm no doctor. I'm no PT. These were just natural remedies that I found for myself that helped me get back to running at a, at, a, at a good level. Digging in, massaging, stretching, and just keeping the foot we, loose at all times. These are, these are the first part of, of trying to get rid of that, that plantar fasciitis. So uh, that brings us to number three. Number three is anti-inflammation. So what happens when we have micro tears? It causes inflammation. When we got a ton of them, we're, we're super inflamed. I mean, guys, when I was at the height of my plantar fasciitis, uh, I was running cross country for my university and, and uh, it was so inflamed that no matter how much man, uh, mind power I put in, I could not step on that foot. Like I would put the foot down, but the rest of my leg wouldn't allow me to step on it. it. It was so weird. It's like I was trying to say body, step on the foot and, and I couldn't do it. Um, that's how inflamed it got. So we need to manage the inflammation. So of course you can do that with the classic, uh, you know, ibuprofen. Uh, tile and all, you know, that when you're at the height of it to try to get rid of it. But I prefer the more natural methods of using ice, okay? Uh, so I, as you can see here, I'm standing in my pool, which at this moment uh, is around 50 degrees. Uh, that's not ice cold, but it's pretty darn cold. So after any kind of activity that I would do, I would just get straight in there and try to quickly get rid of the inflammation to promote that healing. Um, guys, not one of these strategies that I've mentioned so far uh, can, can heal plantar fasciitis on its own. And if you hear the noise, that's my newborn in the background uh, disrupting this video, but we'll continue on. Um, you know, they can't promote healing on its own. You have to do them in conjunction with each other. They, they work together, okay? Um, so if, if we're trying to actively heal it. Sorry for the interruption, guys. The little guy forced me to change my shirt. I won't go into the details but we've got quiet and we can continue and i was just about to get into point number four and that is supporting the foot while it needs to heal so we're going to bring in all those other tactics we have to continue to do them in conjunction with this final step and that is you know because we're walking around all the time uh you know we mentioned earlier that that's one reason why the, this injury just hangs around because it's constantly getting ripped again so if we can prevent that that ripping around in our daily activities by wearing custom orthotics that can take the healing to another level. And guys, it wasn't until I did this final point um, that everything really started to come together. I went to a podiatrist, you know, I did one of those molds where you can stick your foot in there and uh, they'll, they'll create something just specifically for your foot. It's a little bit pricey, but it was total, totally worth it. I got uh, an orthotic that, that supported me in all activities from just walking around to running and when I first started using it, I was really skeptical because it was really uncomfortable. But I was just like, hey, I invested in this. Let's give him a shot. And after about two or three weeks, uh, I started noticing that my foot was really, really improving a lot. And uh, you shouldn't wear orthotics forever because that will weaken the foot. But I, I tell you what, I wore, I wore those things for a year straight because I was scared to um, not use them because, you know, after having plantar fasciitis for 18 months, uh, I, I wasn't going to try to go back there, but I was able to wean off of them. I don't use any orthotics in my running now at all. I make sure to have a shoe that fits my issues. You know, in my foot, I have an issue of having a higher arch and also pronating as well. So I have a stability shoe that corrects for that. Uh, and, and you need to do that too. You need to figure out uh, what was uh, the, the physiological issue that caused uh, plantar fasciitis with you. Uh, yes, the overuse and all that will, will do it, but a lot of times our foot um, is also physiologically lacking um, and we have to compensate for that with, with good shoes and orthotics. Guys, don't be frustrated with plantar fasciitis. It's an issue you can overcome. You just have to be active with it. Don't give up and keep doing it. And I hope this video uh, is helpful to you and gets you back on your feet. Guys, take care. God bless and we'll see you in the next one.